So we start our second session and then we concluded the first session with the Slovakian uh, lady and now we will start with the Slovakian lady that they don't feel hurry like in the first session. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so she's uh, Anna. Yeah. Yeah. So she she's Mrs. Uh, Dr. Anna Galic, uh, Galovicova, president of the Slovak Indian Friendship Society, president of the Slovak Anti-Poverty Network, executive coordinator of the European Anti-Poverty Network in Brussels, and uh, she's already uh, one of our uh, precious um, peace ambassador in Women's Federation. So thank you. I give the mic to you. Hello. Dear sisters, dear friends, Dear organizers, I am very happy to be with you. You are as my family, very close to my heart. And uh, I am also very happy to share with you my whole life experiences. It is 50 years I am involved in uh, mental training. And uh, I am involved in one vision, and it is title of my lecture, one world, one human family. And uh, uh, why I chose this title? Because uh, first time I know this uh, vision, one world, one human family, uh, as I told 50 years ago, when I was 17, I met uh, uh, people who were interesting in Indian philosophy and psychology and mental training, and yoga, and Ayurveda. And they told me one of the oldest Vedic mantra, and it was Vasudhava Kutumbakam, one world, one human family. I understood that uh, that time it was, uh, uh, we can tell, uh, Indo-European spiritual heritage, tradition. And uh, he, he, uh, everywhere when we met, we spoke about our aim to bring all people together. And uh, during my whole life, thanks God, as a psychologist, I was, uh, uh, they allowed me in Charles University, uh, focused on uh, uh, Indian psychology, and all my research works and my uh, thesis also were focused on uh, yoga, yoga in daily life as a tool for mental and spiritual development. Uh, there is uh, written about uh, 2003 uh, G20 presidency. Uh, this ancient mantra it is not some poetic uh, sentence, one world, one human family, Vasudaiva Kutumbakam, but uh, it is a great ancient vision uh, based on the uh, mental fundament of this world. And uh, that time, uh, it was uh, uh, such vision, uh, this ancient Vedic culture through Sanskrit, Sanskrit language, that uh, we, there are in the world two big uh, powers and uh, they, as two stones, uh, melt and uh, fight together. And who is somehow attracted to one stone, uh, either left or right, uh, such person is completely in stagnation and destroyed. So we should reach uh, another stadium or another level of consciousness and it was called Advaita, be above duality. And when we are above duality, now open inner space and this inner space, this uh, mental level, it, it was that time called Brahma. Brahma that time was not God, but was this mental spirit. And uh, so uh, it was called uh, man with great M, and it was called in Sanskrit that we are 
a daughter or son of a man with great M. And it means that we have soul, not only body. And that time people know that we are uh, based uh, on a mental fundament and secondary is material. You know in totalitarian regime it was opposite. Base was material uh, fundament and uh, mental was secondary. But ancient time knew this and they kept very strong not be among both stones destroyed and they kept above uh, uh, supporting and developing inner power. And uh, as G20, uh, it is written, it was presidency of India, G20 last year, and uh, Indian government, especially under the guidance of uh, Prime Minister Modi, uh, they are very much uh, uh, remembered and uh, uh, aware of ancient Vedic culture and uh, uh, heritage, spiritual heritage of India. And the uh, motto of G20 was Vasudaiva Kutumbakam. It means one world, one human family, common future. And uh, this motto, G20, it is not few people as we are here. G20 it is two thirds of planet people of all planet, and it was uh, 20 the greatest countries, states, who had this motto, and it was uh, uh, guided such way that we are uh, not, uh, it was not a motto only for uh, head of states and uh, great uh, prime ministers of these uh, 20 countries, greatest states in uh, in our planet, but it was for uh, all people, all institutions, schools, uh, instit uh, corporations, and also my our organization, Slovak Indian Friendship Society, was co-partner, co-organizator of G20, and what we did, there is also previous, some pictures, previous, G20 you see all, but should be Another also photos. No, here, here, you see, uh, it was under G20. Uh, one was in Piestiani. We see here Madame. She is ambassador of India, pra, uh, mayor of Piestiani. Uh, here is uh, Professor uh, Maheshwarananda, who is founder of Yoga in Daily Life. Uh, uh, system. To, here is me, translator and other. It was a uh, celebration of seven, uh, 37 anniversary festival Colorful India in my town, Piesciani. Our society has been uh, preparing all these uh, 37 uh, festivals, and not only in Piesciani, other town in Slovakia. And also, we can see many people, all, all kind of people who, what I speak now, they understand, they also know more than 30 years, so such wisdom can be spread. It is not only for few people, and I can tell that not only me and my family, but all our friends and uh, we can tell members of our societies, uh, so they are peaceful people and happy people. Though we are living in this time full of polarization, full of duality and fighting, but uh, we are also, uh, we ex uh, experience that it is possible when we are not uh, uh, catched by these two stones and uh, be catched uh, and attract to one part of this uh, to do to opposite powers, which are here uh, whole universe time. So when we are aware of it, so we slowly, slowly return to this uh, ancient Indo-European spiritual heritage and tradition. And I wish very much that uh, we can now 
feel great power and help from India because as it is now, we see syllabus for master in spiritual science. We should know that Prime Minister Modi, when India landed Indian uh, out, a robot landed in a moon on the moon, so his speech was that it is not Indian robot on Indian cosmic uh, cosmic uh, uh, how to say plane who landed, but a whole. Vasudaiva Kutumbakam, whole world landed. And now the next step they are doing in Indian universities since 20, in the school, school year 24, 25, new uh, topic is, uh, uh, is uh, preparing and it is uh, science of spirituality. So not focus only on Hinduism or Buddhism, but even I have this syllabi, detailed syllabi, because I cooperate, and not only I, also other my friends, also Lubica was part of the Zoom conference between both universities. And uh, we, were, uh, we received this syllabi that it is uh, Christianity, it, it is uh, Judaism, uh, Islam, all main world religious, and, uh, but uh, trying uh, somehow overcome uh, duality between science and uh, between uh, religion and spirituality. And uh, uh, this syllabus, uh, there are three visions uh, why it is so important, science of spirituality. One vision is uh, uh, equality between uh, people, it is a human law. And we should know that the first step which was done by Prime Minister Modi 2014, uh, December, he uh, uh, proposed uh, to United Nations uh, International World Day of Yoga, 21st June, and uh, Resolution 69, Lomeno 131, and it is a resolution, human uh, right on health, but not only physical health, but also mental, social, and spiritual health. And it was approved in first reading that people, it was described, did a great circle, member states, except Pakistan, and all very happy. So now we see that we, there is possibility, not only fight and be uh, involved in this fighting, but also pre prepare something completely new as science of spirituality. And uh, cooperation for top standard, it means enlightenment, top standard, top psychological experience, enlightenment or samadhi or some higher level. Now great research works. I am, I was December in Ujjain. It was great conference with the best universities of the world. And even enlightenment process is very good uh, map by experts. And also I was in February in India. So it is now great, uh, uh, how to say, motivation, because they feel that Vasudaiva Kutumbakam, when there is war in Europe, in, West, in the West, it is uh, also not good for uh, Asia. They know it very good. But uh, what is important, that uh, we should trust each other especially to this another, I used to tell, another side of moon, Asia. And as you trust to Korea, South Korea, I trust not only South Korea, also India. And uh, I am very happy that I had chance to meet yoga and uh, Ayurveda and way of thinking, Vedic culture, Indo-European, tradition, spiritual tradition. 
So uh, now uh, there is situation that in June 2004, our uh, universe, three universities are very much interested in a new topic, science of spirituality, and uh, they invited Professor Dr. Nagendra, who is guru, teacher of uh, Prime Minister Modi to Slovakia, to Trnava, and they invited him also as uh, he, he now guides in Bangalore, great uh, research institute, which uh, research uh, influence of yoga, effect of yoga exercising on health, not only physical health, but mental health too, with meditation and inner, inner self-reflection and uh, inner way of uh, concentration. We use call it, uh, as we see in this picture, ocean experience. Ocean experience, ocean is very great. So when we are in this state of mind, so we feel this ocean experience, this uh, very unlimited space, but not material space, but another power who practice spiritual path or religion. That's why we pray five times daily. Usually it is very ancient from Indo-European uh, spiritual tradition, five time prayer or meditation we can tell. And it is to reach such kind of experience. What we saw this uh, here, last picture. I don't know time, but please c control me. Uh, we see now all these girls which have these uh, palms like this, but we should know that it is heart chakra. And heart chakra means that uh, when we put prayer and greeting, when I greet you, I greet you from my heart. And very important is heart chakra and sahasrara chakra, top of the head. And we use tell all this what I spoke, it could be to also title of this, not only one world, one human family, but I could uh, give a name also, world peace through spirituality. Not from this sex, that sex, but through spirituality. And this uh, world peace through spirituality is another title, is revolution of heads and hearts. And this such title and both these titles, subtitle revolution of heads and hearts, we had first time 92 in my town, Pieszczany, uh, it was uh, organized together with uh, American, Canadian, International Institute for Integral Human Sciences. And I can tell that since 92 till today, we sometimes call it like this, one world, one human family, sometimes a revolution of heads and hearts. But it is something which is common. It is not for small groups or something. But for example, Anselm Green, great uh, Christian, uh, uh, how to say, leader, he is very good, uh, maybe people know, maybe not, a healer of... Uh, uh, burnout syndrome. And he explained very clearly that uh, very important is work with heart chakra and top uh, sahasrara chakra, top head and heart revolution to join. Usually they are completely divided that we speak something and feel opposite. But we should Again, join it, heartful, simple speech from the heart, not from papers. 
that's why it is so not easy for me, but it was duty. So uh, they did uh, my presentation also officially. And uh, he practiced with us meditation, Anselm Green, and he told it is meditation from 4th century, 2nd century after Christ, not century, dobre, 200 rokov, to 2nd century, and it was from that time was uh, uh, father, desert father, living alone in desert. And they created also this meditation he did with us in Nitra, my town. He visited and guided this meditation, how to join uh, heart chakra and top of the uh, head. And uh, I, we have this, uh, we uh, had a chance to record this meditation. And I can tell it is the same meditation as I learned uh, 30 years before meeting Anselm Green in India in yoga. And the same, I passed through three years uh, mental exercises San Ignacio. And also I can tell you that uh, it is very similar, especially meditation by Melo, Indian Jesuita Melo. And uh, so I maybe it's time that we should now prepare for future, but a bright future, not uh, uh, thinking how to keep old times. I think last century, war times, and nourish war. Now we should open wings and fly. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, we see so many peaceful people here, so peaceful, peaceful ladies. So the peace starts from inside, and that can be... Uh, yeah, created outside around us. So thank you for your <laughs> experiences. Uh, now we have a uh, yeah, make it a pleasure to welcome a other a gentleman, the second today. Uh, he's from Hungary and uh, he's uh, committed uh, to healing, helping, nurturing, lifting up uh, people. I think he's continuously searching the ways how he can help and heal uh, people both in, inside and outside. And uh, he's kind of um, exemplary person who is living for others in my, in my sight, in my eyes. He's a holistic doctor and president of the Jotengris Foundation. And he used to say that he's a guardian of ancient wisdom of Hungary. So he's our uh, peace ambassador uh, in Hungary. So welcome, Dr. Darno Itibor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Thank you. I don't have any presentation, so. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, please accept my respectful. Uh, it's okay. Uh, please accept my uh, respectful greetings to you. Uh, my name is Tibor Darnoy. I'm a holistic doctor, and uh, for me, it's a great pleasure uh, to be here. Therefore, thank you for a kind invitation. I would like to talk to you uh, about the Hungarian ancient. Uh, uh, knowledge and wisdom, and uh, <clears throat> uh, it, it's really a difficult uh, challenge because we have a lot of uh, uh, unique uh, expressions, but we can only explain. Therefore, please let me invite uh, Zsuzsa, Bakonyi uh, Zsuzsa Klimesné, who will help me in interpreting uh, my message. So she will translate. Zsuzsa Kedves. Uh, can we? Uh, we have only one. Uh, can we have another, please? It's yours. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
talk in Hungarian language to Hungarian uh, guests, and she will translate. And uh, welcome, Zsuzsa. Thank you for your help. So, az első kérdés. The first question. Less. Will. Will be. Azután, hogy megköszönöm, hogy nagyon jól van szervezve a program. Uh, after thanking uh, the well organized program. Úgy alakultak az előadások, really be, hogy nem jöhetett volna jobbkor az enyém. Such a way Ezért nagyon mine, köszönöm, köszönöm az előző előadóknak a nagyszerű előadásokat. Time, best. És uh, szeretném önöktől megkérdezni, I hogy like you, uh, ki az, aki önök közül spirituálisnak érzi magát? Who feels he, she is spiritual? Kérem, tegye fel a kezet. Na, quiet, good. És a többiek. And the others. <laughs> Szeretném elmondani önöknek, hogy like to tell you, volt egy nemrég egy kerekasztal beszélgetés. Not long ago I had a round table discussion. Ahol meg voltam hívva. Where I was invited. Pszichológusok. Psychologists. És kócsok. And coaches were there. Vettek részt, mint hallgató. Par participated as the audience. Az volt a címe a programnak, hogy spiritualitás és pszichológia. Title was spirituality and psychology. És ugyanezt a kérdést feltettem nekik. And I asked them, I asked them the same question. És még a fele sem tette fel a kezét. Not even half raised up the hand from among the audience. Aki nem tette fel a kezét. Those who didn't put up their hands. Tőlük megkérdeztem, hogy ők mit gondolnak erről. So I asked them what do you think about this topic? hogy ők nem spirituálisak. Aren't you spiritual? De mindenki spirituális. Everybody is spiritual. Függetlenül attól, hogy ő mit gondol erről. Independently from what you think about it. Hogy mi a hite. What is your faith? Az az ő privát dolga. That's a private thing. De az ember egy természeti és szellemi lény. Man is a natural and spiritual being. Test, lélek és szellem. Body, mind and spirit. És én most az önök lelkéhez szeretnék szólni. Then I would like to talk to your Ez egy nagyon nemes mind, to spirit. Ez egy nagyon nemes küldetés. That's a very noble mission. Ami most uh, a mai program. Uh, today's program. És én uh, szeretném önöknek elmondani, hogy uh, a világban ha körülnézünk, If you look the world, akkor nagyon nagy, azt látjuk, hogy nagyon nagy zűrzavar van. We can see there is a big chaos. Ugye? Right. Bárkinek az országában, vagy külföldön körülnézünk, or even of Hungary, just look nagy baj van a világban, great trouble in the world. de ez nem pontos megfogalmazás. It's not even the exact definition of it. A világban nincs baj, a világban Rend van. In the world, in reality, there is order. Csak az emberi világban van zavar. There is chaos only in the human world. Az emberiség Humankind eltávolodott a természettől. Got farther from nature. Eltávolodott a spirituális lényétől önmagától. From her, itself, from himself, from his, spirit, his spiritual being. És ezért olyan a világ, amilyen. That's why the world is as it is now. A női minőség, the woman's quality, the essence of woman, a női minőség nincs a helyén. Is not an, on its right place. És ez tudat minőség kérdése. That's a question of the quality of consciousness. Köszön. Közel 3000 Vallás van nyilvántartva hivatalosan a világon. In the world are nearly 3000 uh, religions officially uh, present. 3000 vallás. 3000 religions. De rend csak egy van. But there is only one order. Okay. A vallások csak utak. Uh, religions are just ways. És a szellemi tanítás azt mondja, a spiritual teaching says a tiszta tudat a clear uh, conscience consciousness sorry consciousness a tiszta tudat nem vallásos is not religious csak ismeri a vallásokat just knows uh, religions 
Köszönöm. Nagyon fontosak ezek a dolgok. These things are very important. És ha ismerjük a teremtés rendjét, if we know the order of creation, és tiszteljük a teremtés rendjét, if we respect it, akkor a világunkban rend lesz. Then there will be order in our world. Az ősi magyar bölcselet, the ancient Hungarian wisdom, 8-10 ezer éves múltra tekint vissza. 8-10 has, éves. Has a past of 8-10,000 years. A tibeti bőn, tibeti bőn, bón, the tib- Tibetan bőn, vallása rokon gyökerű. Uh, has, uh, it is related to it, the ancient Hungarian wisdom. És hasonlóan tiszta tanításokat képvisel. And is representing also a such clear and the pure teachings mint a védikus as the vedic culture essenciális tanítások it is a essential teaching a világnak a közös nevezője a rezgés ezt nem tudom the common denominant of the world is resonation rezgés minden rezgés everything is resonation resonation és a magyar Bölcselet, a magyar ősi bölcselet. The Hungarian, the ancient Hungarian wisdom. Különösen tiszteli a nőt. Especially uh, uh, respect women. Miért? Why? Amikor a világ született. When the world was born. A születés, mint megnyilvánulás. The birth itself as a manifestation. Egy női jellegű is a feminine folyamat. A feminine process. A női minőséghez kötődik. It is related to the woman's quality, the essence of woman. És ezt nagyon sok vallás hasonlóképpen ismeri. And uh, many other religions recognize this too. Számos országban in many countries önök találkozhattak. You may have met a fekete Madonna mítosza. Uh, the myth, mythology of the Black Madonna. Hasonló tudást takar. It is also uh, comprising a, a similar teaching. Csak már feledésbe merült, elfelejtették. But people already forgot about it. Amikor, amikor a világ keletkezik, when the world is created, az egyből, out of one, Először is kettő lesz. First becomes two. De a polaritás és a dualitás. But polarity and duality. Nem igazán szinonimák. They are not really, really synonymous words. A kettőségről szólnak. De a bad duality. De mást jelentenek. But mean different thing. Említettem, As hogy. I Különböző tudatminőségek. There are different qualities ben, of consciousness. Ilyen különböző tudatminőségekben élhetünk. So we can live in different levels of consciousness. És nagyon szomorú. Nagyon szomorú. And it's very sad. <laughs> hogy az emberiség ma. That humanity today. Még mindig. Still. Nagyon alacsony tudatminőségben él. Is living in a very low uh, level of conscience. Nagyon alacsony tudatminőség. It's very low level. Ezt a mi bölcseletünk úgy hívja, a wisdom t- calls it, hogy ösztönlét. Uh, instinct life. A, az előadásokon elhangzott I could hear in the previous lectures, a tudomány és a spiritualitás kapcsolata. Uh, really, um, we could hear about the relationship between science and spirituality. Szétválaszthatatlanok. They are inseparable. Miért? Why? A tudomány nagyon sok kérdésre nem tud választ adni. Science just cannot tell answers to many questions. Ezt én mondom orvosként. I say to you as a medical doctor. Ha én nem foglalkoznék, if I were not into közel 30 éve uh, already for 30 years a szellemi tanításokkal in um, into spiritual teachings még ennyire sem érteném a holisztikus létezésünket az I orvoslás would, i would not really understand even this way the holistic uh, 
medicine, holistic healing. És milyen érdekes? How interesting it is. Hogy a tudomány, a modern tudomány, that the modern science, a quantum fizika, quantum physics, igazolja, is uh, proving a szellemi tanításokat. A spiritual teachings. 30 éve, It's 30 years ago, nem tudtuk, hogy van mikrobiom. We didn't know about microbiome. 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 You know it? Yes. Nem tudtuk. We didn't know about it. Pedig mindenkinek volt. Though all of us we had. Professor úrnak is volt. <laughs> a professor also. Ilyen nagy volt neki. He had De nem such tudta. a big one, but he didn't know about it. És uh, azt hittük 30 éve. 30 years ago we thought hogy a genetika kőbe van vésve. That genetics is like iron clad rule. Oh, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Ma már tudjuk, hogy nem igaz. We know already today it's not true. A daganatos betegségek mögött tumorific, behind tumorific sickness, tumors, mindig van genetikai eltérés. There are always genetic differences. De ezeknek csak 8 Tíz százaléka öröklött. Only 8 to 10 percent of them are inherited. A többi the rest úgynevezett szerzett the acquired, acquired life. szerzett génhiba yeah, the gene like mistakes or deficiency amit az életvitelünkkel mi hozunk létre. What we create through our lifestyle. Ez a helyzet. Ez az that's igazság. Situation, that's the truth. Ezért that's why Nekünk fontos tanulni, we have to learn, mert ha önök ismerik Carl Gustav Jungot, if you know about Jung, akkor megnézik a Wikipédiát, you can look in Wikipedia. és elolvashatják, you can read, hogy honnan merítette a kimagasló tudását. From where he basically took his very outstanding knowledge. Tudja valaki önök közül? Do you know? Az egyiptomi halottas könyvből. From, uh, Egyptian book of who that that nem a másik. Egyiptomi halottas könyv mm-hmm. és a Yiking. And Yiking. Chinese. Chinese. And Chinese. Chinese is És ő ma is egy oszlopa a modern And pszichológiának. He is one of the pillars of modern psychology up until today. Tehát a világban van egy rend. There is an order in the world. És az a mi világunk a kettősség világa. Our world is the world of du- uh, pairs or dualities. És az az alacsony tudatminőség, amiben ma az emberiség él. And this low level of um, uh, consci- consciousness, which are where we are living now. És természetesen a jelenlévő kivételek. Uh, ex- uh, at the exception of those present here. <laughs> az egy alá fölé rendelő hierarchia. This is a subor, like a superior inferior hierarchy. Az ősi magyar bölcselet. The ancient Hungarian wisdom. Ennek a kettősségnek egy a kettősségnek egy magasabb minőségét képviseli. Representing a higher quality of this duality ami nem az alá fölé rendelés, which, hanem a mellé rendelés. Which is not a superior inferior order, but a, a complementary order. Azt mondtam, minden energia. So as I said, everything is energy. Ezen kívül minden örvény. And moreover, everything is a whirlwind. A világ örvénylik. The world is in a whirlwind. Nagyban és kicsiben. On a higher and lower levels too. A galaxisok. Too. The galaxies too. Az elektronok, a részecskék. and particles. Minden örvénylik. Everything is in the world wind. A, az egyre javuló minőségű élet kulcsa. The key to uh, always uh, like um, improving lifestyle. A nő és férfi hímség nősténység. Uh, fem, female, uh, femininity, masculinity. Iker örvénylés. Uh, this is like a, a twin whirlwind. Az iker örvény. This twin, twin whirlwind. Energia tana. Uh, basically, uh, tantana, science or a, um, theory of this uh, uh, twin whirlwind. 
a buddhista tanításokban is ismert. Is also well known in the Buddhist teachings. De ott titkosítva van. But it's a, put in, it's a secret. Akárki nem ismerheti meg. Just anybody cannot know about it. Miért fontos ennek a tudása, hogy alá fölé vagy mellé rendelő viszonyról beszélünk? Why is it important to know whether we are talking about a, a superior, inferior, like a relationship or complementary relationship? Az alá fölé rendelő tudatminőségben. In the quality of uh, superior inferior, a két rész, the two sides, mindig ütközik és harcol. Are always fighting and clashing. Ez a harc világa. This is a fight in the world. Ez az ösztönlét világa. This is the world of uh, instinct. Itt nincs béke. There is no peace in it. Ez másként szólva. Uh, in other words, ez a vagy vagy világ. This is a either either like either either world or or. Vagy te vagy én. Or you or me. De nem együtt. But not together. A mellé rendelő. In the complementary relationship. Tudat minőségben. A quality of consciousness. Mi like együtt. We together. Itt tud kialakulni az ikerőrvény. That's energia. how the twin whirlwind energy can be created. Itt ezek az elemek, az elemek, a And these elements, elemek, yeah, that these elements, nem harcolnak. Aren't fighting. Nem gyengítik egymást. They are not weakening each other. Hanem együtt. But together elemeknek. they are ascending. Az energiáik growing. összeadódnak. The energies are added to each other. És az a mi lehetőségünk. And the opportunity or possibility hogy mindannyian egyénileg that all of us individually ebbe a magasabb emelkedett tudatminőségbe megérkezzünk. We can arrive, uh, basically our interest is to arrive in this higher level of um, con- consciousness. Ide út vezet. There is a way leading there. Ez nem egy döntés kérdése. This is not question of decision. Szellemi, lelki szellemi munkálkodást kell végeznünk. We have to make spiritual, uh, mental work. We have to work on it. Every day. Minden nap. <laughs> Ez nagyon fontos, It's very important. mert uh, még egy témát szeretnék önökkel megosztani. Still one topic uh, I would like to share with you. Ez egy olyan téma, This is a topic. amiben a, a tudomány Where science és a szellemi tanítások egyetértenek. And the spiritual teachings agree. Nagyjából. Like approximately. Szeretném megkérdezni önöktől, I would like to ask you, hogy önök mit gondolnak? What do you think? Nekünk. Mm-hmm. Átlag embereknek. Like for us common people. A mindennapjainkban, az életünkben. In our everyday life. Hány százalék a tudatos jelenlét? How, how many percent, how much percent we have like conscious presence or conscious like uh, to be conscious? Az, az ébrenlét, amikor like, ébren vagyunk. Uh, when we are awake, consciously. Under 10? She is really positive. <laughs> This, uh, congratulations. Nagyon-nagyon. A tudomány szerint csak egy-két százalék. Mm-hmm. According to science, just one, two percent. A szellemi tanítások szerint zero. According to spiritual teaching, zero. Ez azt jelenti, This means, hogy a dolgok csak történnek velünk, things are happening with us, és a gyerekkorunkban in our childhood, felvett és beépített basically our in corporated uh, szokásaink habits uh, which we took in the childhood lenyomataink vagy viselkedés mintáink and basically are, élünk. we are living um, as a prisoners of our basically um, behavior which we acquired when we were child children automatikus reakciók uralnak minket we are ruled by automatic reactions tudatosság helyett. Instead of con- like being conscious. 
És most nagyon fontos üzenetet szeretnék átadni önöknek. Like to give you a very important message. Hogy az ember man, az egyetlen lény a földön. A man and woman are the az only ember, being. Yeah, man is the only being on earth. Nem a, nem a, tehát a, a, a férfi nő együtt. Oké, oké. Tehát az ember az egyetlen lény a yes, földön. Yes, yes, the only only uh, being on earth. Aki Uh, megistenülhet, ez a deifikáció. Uh, who can uh, become divine. Aki megistenülhet, aki tudatossá válhat. Who can become conscious. Sem a növényvilág. Nor the plant world. Sem az állatvilág. Or animal world. Számára ez nem lehetséges. Uh, can uh, reach this. Egy macska. A cat. Sosem lesz macskább. Cannot become more cat. Okay. Egy virág uh, flower sem lesz virágabb. Cannot become more flower. I think it's difficult to. De mind a virág. Uh, oh yeah. But uh, both uh, the flower és a macska is and the cat kiteljesíti azt a tudat minőséget. They basically um, are in a perfect stage basically of their of their being. Yeah. Amit az ő létezése kínál. Yes. Nem lehet több. They cannot be more. Az ember az egyetlen lény. Man is the only being. Aki megistenülhet, aki tudatossá válhat. And conscious. Ezért elmondhatjuk, hogy a tudatosság That's nem why being conscious. Nem jár alanyi jogon. Is not like uh, natural, naturally uh, acquired. How to say? We are not born with it or something like this. Csak, uh, csak. Uh, a tudatossá válás lehetősége But van számokra. But the possibility to become conscious is given to all of us. Óriási nagy ajándék ez az élettől. This is a great gift from life. És óriási nagy lehetőség. And it's a great opportunity. És záró gondolatként szeretném elmondani. As a closing elmondani, thought, I would like to say. Hogy valószínűleg itt mi mindannyian a teremben. Um, Basically, probably all of us here in the hall. Egy különösen szerencsés nemzedék vagyunk. We are a greatly fortunate, a blessed generation. A mi életünkben nem volt háború. In our life, we didn't have war. Nem volt nélkülözés, uh, scarcity or famine. Az én szüleim és nagyszüleim. My parents and grandparents. És az őseink. And our ancestors. Évezredeken keresztül of years, próbáltak túlélni. Uh, tried to survive. Ők nem járhattak védikus. They couldn't go to a vidik, vidik, uh, school vagy, or they couldn't vagy study about iskolába, it or Buddhist school. Mert ők túléltek. Because they survived. They had to survive. A jelenkor the present age nekünk különleges lehetőséget ad. It giving us a special opportunity a szellemi emelkedésre for a spiritual ascension a spiritual az growth életminőségünk emelésére to basically uh, um, increase the quality of our life a női és férfi uh, kapcsolatnak a to, felemelésére to uh, basically grow or elevate the relationship between man and woman nem nő uralom Not a woman rule, nem férfi uralom, a rule, hanem a nő és a férfi együtt. But man and woman together. Az, az ősi bölcseletünk azt mondja, uh, in the ancient wisdom it is said, nő meg férfi egy két fele. Woman and man, this is two sides of the one. Együtt alkotnak egészet. And together they create a whole. Nő és férfi együtt egy ember. Woman and man are together one person. És uh, fontos, hogy It's very a nők és a férfiak is ezt megértsék. For men and women to understand this. Szeretettel, tisztelettel forduljanak egymás to felé. To each other with love and respect. És megadják egymásnak a szabadságot. And to give to each other freedom. Ami röviden így szól. Uh, which is like shortly saying. Mindent szabad. Everything is allowed. Ami nem árt másnak. Is not harming the other. Bővebben. <laughs> More in detail. Minden ember korlátlan szabadsága. Uh, 
every person's limitless freedom addig tart is uh, until the point amíg nem sérti a másik ember korlátlan szabadságát but it's not hurting the other person's limitless freedom és ezt betartjuk minden élethelyzetben and we have to keep this in every uh, circumstances in life akkor békés életet élhetünk and if we do this we can live a peaceful life az utolsó ajándékom tényleg zárásként gift really as a conclusion a hölgyeknek szó this is for ladies here mert az ősi az ősi magyar bölcselet the ancient hungarian wisdom képvisel egy olyan titkos tanítást is representing a secret teaching amit én még máshol nem hallottam. Which I have never heard in from other cultures. Ez az ősejtés. This is the ancient foreknowledge. Az Isten anya. Uh, mother God. A nőkben hagyta az ős sejtést. Uh, let in women this ancient foreknowledge. Ami azt jelenti. Which means. Hogy minden nő. Every woman. Önök is hölgyeim, mind. You also ladies here present. Direkt közvetlenül. Directly. Összeköttetésben vannak az Isten anyai minőségével. With the quality of mother God. Mi férfiak nem. We them men not. Mi férfiak. Them men. Az asszonyon, a párunk, a feleségünk, a nőn keresztül tudjuk, tudunk kapcsolódni. Are connected throughout our wives, our mothers. Ez a rend. Ez a rend. Ez a rend. This is the order. Ezért tartozik össze nő és férfi. That's why man and woman are together. Has, és I mean, belong van, to each other. És ezért van az. And that's why. Hogy a hölgyek. That ladies. Sokkal intuitívabbak. Are much more intuitive. És a sejtés. And this uh, foreknowledge. A nem ismert dolgokból is tud információt szerezni. Can take information even from things which are not known for them. Ezért a hölgyek felé nagy csodálattal vagyunk. That men are really uh, respecting and um, admiring, thank you, admiring the ladies. És uh, önök is csodálatosak. You are also wonderful all here. Hogy uh, ezzel foglalkoznak, that hogy with this. a női minőség, a nők a helyére kerüljenek a világban. Amihez nekünk is példát kell mutatni. We also, like, them also, like men have to show example. És nőnek is és férfinek is. Woman and man. Lelkileg és szellemileg is emelkedni kell. Spiritually and uh, emotionally, um, spiritually and mentally they have to uh, rise up. Én ehhez szeretnék Ascent. önöknek jó egészséget kívánni. I would like to wish all of you for this good health. Bölcsességet. Wisdom. And thank you for your kind attention and thank you for your kind translation. It was wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Darnoy Tibor and Zsuzsi. Yeah, it was really a great wisdom and words of wisdom. Thank you so much. So it is good to go to such a doctor for healing who knows more about uh, the human being than only body, you know. So, yeah, thank you so much. <clears throat> and now, last but not least, our uh, last speaker will be our precious former uh, Hungarian president who was um, living here in Hungary for long years. Even she was studying in Hungary in the Elta University, Hungarian literature and linguistics. So she, will, she, can, she could speak Hungarian continuously but, or fluently, but she will speak for your yeah, uh, happiness just in um, English. So she's already, she has two children, two grandchildren, and her husband, Tony Cook, is here in the back, in red. <laughs> so nice couple. And then uh, she uh, 
uh, yeah, she was here, the president of Women's Federation from 94 to 98. So I was privileged to start my work with her as uh, in my early 20s. So I don't say what I am. <laughs> and um, yeah, so she will introduce uh, to us our founder, uh, mother of peace, Dr. Hakcha Han Moon's uh, extraordinary life and um, and uh, really the motivation behind the founding of the Women's Federation. So her life and her attitude towards people and towards uh, life. And uh, yeah, this is really exemplary and uh, we are so touched. That's why we are here. So I would like to ask Lizzie to, yeah, Elizabeth Cook to give her speech about, yeah, Dr. Hakchahan. And also she, she was so privileged to meet her personally also, so it is also a very wonderful thing. Thank you, Timmy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear members of Women's Federation. Yeah, Dr. Tibor said he had the best time for his lecture, but I think I have the best time <laughs> because uh, it's the last lecture and everybody will watch very closely when will be the end. So, <laughs> so, so I'm sure you will be very attentive and um, I will try to be short. Yeah. Um, Mother Moon led actually an exemplary, uh, an extraordinary life and it is not easy to speak about it in, in a short time. Still, I try. I prepared many pictures, in contrary to Dr. Tiba. <laughs> so, in order to demonstrate a little bit about her. Um, she is the, the founder of the Women's Federation International. And at the beginning also, she was the president. She is a Korean lady. And... Um, Together with her husband, Reverend Moon, they dedicated their life to the quest for peace. And together they worked with heads of states, Nobel Prize winners, religious leaders, and all kinds of representatives of societies and nations and religions in order to, to foster peace, world peace. And they led a very public life. And they serve a great example, as a great example for us. So how did it come about that she was able to live such a special life? So Mother Moon was born oops, 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 in what is today North Korea. It look, this looks like a really normal village. It is also, um, it is in, near Pyongyang and she was born in 1943. Uh, Korea was a poor country at that time. And uh, it was shortly before the end of World War II. And um, her, her parents uh, gave her a very good foundation for her life. Her father, I just show this here, because he was a very studious ma man and a very religious man. He was a follower of a famous preacher and also he was a school director and all his life he was a, a teacher. And her mother... Her mother and grandmother, they were very, very religious as well. And I mention this because for Korea to be a Christian was not an average situation. Because most of the Koreans uh, were, or are still Buddhists or Shintoists or Confucianists. But these people were uh, um, fervent Christians. And I say this because it connects uh, to us also, because we come from a Christian culture in Europe, so they even as a, as Koreans they uh, they cherish the Christian religion very much, and Mrs. Moon was educated by her mother to be a, a very to have a strong spiritual training, lots of prayer, lots of studying of holy holy uh, books of uh, saints, and so she acquired. Um, a very strong and resilient character and a stable character. And even when she was young, she, uh, I mean, guided by her mother, she was thinking about God and how she can help God. And this was very important in her future life. But uh, the situation was not easy. And uh, in 1948, 
uh, Korea, after the Second World War, Korea was uh, divided and the North was uh, actually occupied by Russia and they became communist. And as in North Korea, the capital Pyongyang was a very strong Christian city with many Christians. Many of them fled to the South because they were persecuted by the communists. So M Mrs. Moon was five years old when they had to flee from uh, North Korea. And before that, they were even uh, uh, put into prison for 11 days, she and her mother. <laughs> and then they, they were released and they fled to the south and they risked their lives many times. Even there was a situation when they arrived in the South Korean area, um, um, soldiers found them and they thought they are North Korea, they, they, they are communists and they wanted to shoot them. And then this little girl, uh, Mother Moon, started to sing a folk song, a Korean folk song. And then the prisoners, uh, the, the soldiers knew that actually they are not communists and they spared their lives and so they could escape into the South. And then in South Korea, they uh, just lived as refugees, uh, like thousands or millions of Koreans as well. I just want to um, show a short uh, passage of her autobiography which shows her attitude, um, how, how they lived. She said, my mother often called me precious daughter of God with an emphasis as if she were praying. Throughout her life, that was an expression she used when she prayed for me, her only daughter. In this way, I grew up with the feeling that it was an honor to be the daughter of God, the daughter of the Lord. Despite our poverty, and although my father was not with us, I was always content. Because I knew that God was my father and the reason for my life, and that he would always be by my side and take care of me. That is her, I think that describes her basic attitude uh, towards life and the state of her soul, I would say. And she, she went through many tribulations, but she always returned to this point that God is with her. God is her father and God loves her. And I think we all desire to live in such a state of mind because then we could solve our problems in a better way. Anyway, so uh, what happened afterwards is that her mother was uh, looking always for the church where there were the most devout Christians. And finally, in 1955, she found this, this house with the preacher uh, Reverend Moon and she felt he was specially guided by God and he had a very strong faith and uh, in 1955 he had founded um, an association which he called um, Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity that title says everything that uh, Re uh, Reverend Moon's desire and endeavor was to, to unite the Christian world uh, the Christians and also the religious world generally. And um, um, Mrs. Moon's mother and he, she joined this church and attended it for five years, five or six years. And then in, in 1960, it came to the miraculous wedding of Reverend Moon and um, Hak Chahan Moon. This is the Korean uh, traditional dress. And um, she was very young, and Reverend Moon was already uh, 40 years old, she was 23 years old. He had already gone through concentration camp, gone through many death and life and death situations, and built up a, a religious movement. And she, she joined him with the determination to support this, this way. So their wedding happened and then with this wedding they started um, a movement of blessing uh, people in, in holy marriage, young people, older people, everybody who wanted to or still wants to renew his marriage can have this special marriage blessing which they give. This became very famous actually throughout the world. Yeah, so the small family this is then some photograph. The small family became a big family and they had many children. This is still in Korea, you see, in uh, the lakeside. And the family was always the cornerstone for them of world, for world peace. 
and Reverend Moon's teaching always had the, the one core teaching, please uh, invite God in your family, make a, make a God-centered family. And they inspired thousands of couples to found families with their own family. So then time went on. In 1972, the Moon family moved to America. And Reverend Moon said he felt he has to be a fireman to, to um, solve all the um, problems in America, the moral problems. And uh, they were traveling through all states, giving lectures, uh, speeches, everything, and made all efforts to unite the Christian world. One of their biggest events was a rally in Washington, at Washington Monument with 300,000 people. I happened to be there, although I was very young at the time. Um, it, was the, it was really an, an outstanding effort to awaken the Christian world to that they turn back to their faith and overcome the moral crisis which, which swept all over America. Um, yeah, so I just, this is the last family picture I want to show. Mother Moon gave birth to 14 children, seven boys, seven girls, over 40 grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And as I said, they always served as an inspiration for their followers and for so many people also to, to, um, to create families and to devote, to devote their lives to build up their families. Um, this is a, uh, also a quote from um, Mother Moon's uh, autobiography, and I brought it here because it's, uh, it explains how Women's Federation actually came into existence. It was a time in America where um, the, the political left was um, making efforts to put Reverend Moon into jail because of some reasons, because of the movement and so on. And uh, then Mrs. Moon said, when he was imprisoned in this uh, little town, it was called Danbury, they were discussing and praying a lot what to do. And they were also thinking what, what to do when Reverend Moon is not here anymore or when something happens to him. And then they, they came to the conclusion that uh, Mother Moon has to continue in, in his place. And so they decided to really um, uh, put together a woman's group, a woman's, po woman's power, and to, it came to the founding of the Women's Federation later. This was, um, there was big protests in America, Christian pastors united and were uh, protesting against this um, um, uh, that, that, that Reverend Moon had to go to prison. And this was the first time where Mother Moon had to step forward and kind of do all the things he did before. Actually, Reverend Moon himself said about this time, I'm honored that I could serve time in Danbury to, prote to protect religious freedom sincerely in Christ. And he, he, he gave such a good example in prison that uh, he was uh, released earlier, actually. So, but we have to move on. Then uh, um, in the 1990s, this was 1990, Reverend Mother Moon visited many um, world leaders in order to negotiate about peace and about freedom. They met Gorbachev, uh, and then one year later they met the North Korean, um, actually, ruler Kim Il-sung in order to open ways to make peace. Then in 1992, uh, April 1992, there was the founding of the International Women's Federation for World Peace um, on April 10th in, in Korea, in Seoul, with 150,000 women, mostly from Asian countries, but also from Euro European countries. And um, Mrs. Moon invested all her energy into developing the global pace for, uh, uh, base for this Women's Federation, and she went around the world several times, gave speeches, and inspired women from all races and countries to, to form uh, federations and work together in, in public. It was a great inspiration, actually, for so many women, and some of them 
um, who started the Women's Federation are even here today. Hmm. So shortly, <laughs> it's very short glimpse of the Women's Federation history. It started in 1992, and in 1994, 1,600 volunteers were sent from Japan into 600 countries to help develop the Women's Federation, but also to to develop uh, human, humanitarian projects. Also, uh, Austria, Slovakia, Hungary um, uh, received young, very nice uh, Japanese women who worked so hard and with so much enthusiasm to promote the Women's Federation. And uh, from 1994, a special project was inaugurated, the, the uh, Bridge of Peace ceremonies, which also served for uh, promoting peace among countries uh, who were, which were enemies before. In 1997, Women's Federation gained general consultative status with the United Nations Economic and Social Council. Our sister Renate talked, about, uh, talked today about the work at the United Nations, which um, this, this status made it possible to work at the United Nations. Yeah, the bridges of peace, I, don't, I will not tell more. Later, some Women's Federation representatives will talk about it, maybe. And now, just a glimpse about where Mrs. Moon went. This was in Budapest, actually, 1993, and this was in Budapest, 1995. She gave speeches here and she was very happy, as you can see. I think she, she felt very much accepted, very loved and very well here. Um, da, 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 da. Yes, sorry. Uh, uh, let, yeah, this is still Budapest, <laughs> you know. And then we had a big meeting with Slovakian and Hungarian sisters, 1996. Some of you are here. We had a, a sisterhood ceremony to make peace between Slovakia and Hungary. Then uh, Mother Moon was in Vienna, 1996, and in Slovakia. This is the only photograph I found, 1995, um, with her husband. I think it was the founding of the sister organization, Universal Peace Federation. I show these pictures because uh, we can see that uh, Mother Moon was really very active beside having such a big family and many things going on in her life. She always was ready to get into the airplane and fly to another country to, uh, to inspire people, to support people and help people. Then 2012, we must make a big jump actually, 2012 her husband uh, died, we, we say he went to the spirit world his body died, but his spirit never dies, which was, of course, not an easy time for Mother Moon and also not for us as a movement. And she actually kept the Korean tradition of three years mourning, like visiting the, the tomb, the grave of the husband for three years. You can see this. And she, she gave really this incredible example of, of faithfulness and love for her husband. But then she started traveling again. 2015, she visited Vienna and she uh, gave a speech at a meeting of 2,400 people, encouraging all the members and telling us, you, you, made, you created such deep roots which will never disappear again. <laughs> so it was a very beautiful meeting in, in Vienna. And the next meeting, uh, ah, at this meeting she also gave a speech in the United Nations. This is quite unusual because it's very difficult to speak in the United Nations and she even spoke about God, which also is not usual in the UN. But she managed and um, she was very happy about it actually. Because one of the most important projects she and her husband pursued was actually to, to create a, a religious council at the United Nations, which but has not happened yet, but she's... And in 2018, she was in Vienna again, in the Stadthalle with 10,000 people. This is the former uh, defense minister of Austria. He really loves Mother Moon. And um, also, in, at this time, she spoke a lot about... Um, Christianity's responsibility, uh, Europe's responsibility, what uh, Christians' res responsibility 
was and, and with Christians could not do and what we should catch up with. Anyway, I come to the end slowly. Uh, this is just an example of her schedule of 2019 from September to December. So she, she traveled to Europe, to Albania, she traveled to Africa twice, to America, uh, and she traveled to Korea, Korea, um, Japan. It, in each of these uh, locations, she met religious leaders, she met states, heads of states, she conversed with them, she tried to convey God's will and God's, God's will for our times to them. And one of her main uh, goals is to promote good governance, that the people who are in responsible positions, that they govern with uh, moral uh, awareness. So these are just some examples uh, with the uh, Prime Minister of Cambodia or a very famous uh, ev evangelist from the USA and um, a prophet and the leader of uh, millions of people from South, South Africa. And she manages really to approach these people as a mother, with a motherly heart, not as a leader who wants to tell them something important, but as a mother, she embraces them as a mother, and that's why they feel also like, like their sons, uh, like belonging to, to her family. Okay, now there's some, something not going on. <laughs> no, Emilian, can you put the next one? Because now there's something very much not, uh -huh, yeah. So in 2020, she, she initiated the biggest summit meeting, actually, which I remember in Korea with 6,000 people. And her, her summary was, finding a way to people's hearts is more difficult than clearing a path through a jungle. Unlike trees that give way to the axe, people have a mind of their own. And when something goes against their will, they close their hearts. I have shed sweat and tears trying to open hearts and connect people as one family. It's in her words what I, what I said before. And then she initiated um, a peace prize for people uh, who made substantial contributions to peace in different areas. You can just see uh, very prestigious people, very important people. And um, one of uh, uh, one thing which is very close to her heart is the healing of the human soul of the human co human situations, and that's why when she was in Senegal she visited this place, uh, a, an island, Gore Island. This is a pl the door or a place where they uh, sent the African people out um, and so, uh, onto the ship, and they were shipped to America as slaves. So this is the 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 way or the door which where there was no coming back. And she went there, she prayed, she, she tried to purify the place with the salt. We have holy salt, like the Catholic Church has holy water, we have holy salt. She sorted it and prayed. And she did something similar in Austria when she was there. 2018, she sent her main representatives to Mauthausen, which was a concentration camp in the Second World War. And he prayed there a very deep prayer and he sanctified the place and prayed that all the, the, the spirits may be uplifted who, who have been treated so badly there. And uh, Reverend and Mrs. Moon have have supported and fostered passionately culture and arts. So they founded a, a Korean folk ballet group already in 1963, when the Korea was still very poor, and also our movement was very poor. But uh, Mother Moon's and uh, Reverend Moon's idea was they have to uplift the people's spirit and also change the conception of Korea in the world. Korea is a third world, third world country, uh, which has been destroyed completely. And these little angels, they traveled the world and they became very famous actually. <laughs> and they really changed Korea's, um, uh, the, the Korea's reputation. There's a group of these small girls, but there's also a group of, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. A bigger uh, ballet dancers. And this is 
this is so beautiful, this, um, this program which they used to pre present. I could show hundreds of photos and you would still not get tired of watching them or you could watch them and you go, wow. So it's, it's just so beautiful. Uh, they performed in Vienna, I could see them live and they can really lift up our hearts and show something about Korean culture. And Mother Moon and Father Moon were always very proud of them and took them everywhere they could. Yeah, summarizing, so what are the main, um, main points, focal points of Mother Moon's work? Uh, Interreligious harmony, as I said, especially in the USA, they worked so hard for uniting the Christian world. But as they are from an Asian country, they, they know very well Buddhism, what Buddhism is, what Confu Confucianism is. So they, they are close actually to all the religions and they, they invested so much in interreligious activities. Uh, peace education, healing history, what I mentioned, good leadership. Um, many of the conferences which Mother Moon initiated were aimed at uniting the two Koreas, North and South Korea. This is very close to her heart because so much suffering is going on. Families have been separated. And um, we know North Korea's situation is not, um, not so, so well developed as South Korea. And finally, uh, world peace. Um, in, the, in the time when there was COVID, uh, Mother Moon did not rest. She, um, she uh, initiated many conferences, online conferences, with millions of, um, of uh, people attending. Thank you for your attention. You were very attentive. <laughs> Thank you, Lizzie. Yeah, it's very difficult to summarize in 20 minutes uh, Mother Moon life because yeah, she is already an elder lady, <laughs> over 80 years old. So, and she did a lot, and still she is very active. So we are very proud of her that even in this in her age, yeah, she is traveling around, and yeah, she is coming to Munich in May actually. Uh, 